Hello. Imagine looking through a camera's lens, capturing the world exactly as it is, right? A camera is designed to take a raw, unfiltered snapshot of reality. When you look through the viewfinder, what you see through it, light, color, texture, is what you also expect to see outside the viewfinder. Now think about what happens when you see the world through your own eyes. You might assume it's the same, that your eyes are another type of a lens, capturing the world as it actually exists. But that's not true. You see, unlike a camera, our brains are not just passive receivers of visual data. They actually create a full production. It edits, fills in the gaps, and colors the world according to what it thinks we need to know. What we see isn't what's out there. It's what our brain creates for us to experience. I'm an entrepreneur who's been involved in deep learning and cognitive AI. We've used neural nets to create models that extract emotions and behaviors. And we build these models to focus on extraction from the human voice, not necessarily from the words themselves, but how you are saying those words, intonations, prosody, pitch, and tonal variants. And here's what blew my mind. We were able to do this across languages, accents, dialects, tonal, non-tonal, it didn't matter. It worked across the board. It was as if there was a universal baseline that transcended language, almost like a fundamental code that powers us all. So today's journey is about this one unsettling truth. What if the world as you know it, it's just an elaborate illusion created by your brain? What is reality, really? Imagine walking into a room. You take in the scene, and you assume you're seeing everything clearly. But in reality, your eyes are only transmitting fragments of data to your brain. Now, it's your brain that's piecing together these fragments to create sense of the world for you and completing the picture. You see, our brains aren't passive receivers of visual data. They're actually storytellers. As soon as light hits your eyes, billions of neurons begin an active lightning fast process of editing and constructing a visual story. So the question is, what are these neurons up to? Let's take a look at something simple. Here are two squares, A and B. One looks lighter, right? But if I remove the surrounding context, you'll see they're actually the same color. This is your brain editing reality right now for you. It's taking visual input and constructing something that makes more sense to you, even though it's not accurate. And this isn't just about illusion. Color itself doesn't exist as you might think. What we call red, blue, green, is just a brain's interpretation of the wavelength of light. It's as if each of us is experiencing our own personalized show. You see, there's no red out there, like this chair that you're sitting on. It's simply light at different wavelengths. Your brain paints the world in color to help you make sense of it. It's the same with taste and smell. That smell of coffee and the taste of chocolate that you've grown to love so much, those are also interpretations by your brain of chemical interactions. Our brains are always and continuously adding meaning by adding color, flavor, and smell. And here's the catch. Because our brain edits and simplifies, it also deletes the information that it considers unnecessary for you. We're constantly missing information seeing only what our brain deems relevant. Your reality isn't necessarily objective. It's customized for you. So have you ever walked into a room and missed a glaring detail only to notice it minutes later? 
That's because your brain decided that that detail wasn't important until suddenly it was. And this is called selective attention. And it's your brain's way of deciding what's worthy of your conscious experience in that moment of time. But it's not just about seeing. Memory plays a role too. See, when you look at something, your brain's not just processing what you're looking at in the moment. It's referencing experiences and memories from the past and bringing it back to the scene that you're looking at and trying to make sense of the new information. This is why sometimes when you see something that you expect to see, it's not out there. So all this talk about a brain's creating a visual reality begs the question, what if a reality itself is kind of a simulation? Philosopher Nick Bostrom proposed the simulation hypothesis. He suggested that if a civilization becomes advanced enough, it can create simulations so realistic that beings inside them would have no idea that they're in one. In other words, reality as we experience it might be part of a larger, more complex design. One where our brain's interpretation of reality may be just a small part of the larger simulation script. Think about it. If we're in a simulation, then our reality might be intentionally bounded in certain ways, including the limits of our own perception. You see, what we experience could be like, say, a set in a video game where our limits are controlled by the simulation or the rules of the game. And our brains might be just creating for us a reality that we're allowed within this set based on the rules of the program. Now, if this is true, how much of what we see and what we experience can we actually influence? Are we just passive players, or can we bend the script a little bit? Let me show you an interesting optical illusion. So look at this rotating mask that's hollow on one side. So even though physically hollow or concave on one side, your brain insists on seeing it as convex or not hollow when that side is visible. Now, why is that? It's because your brain's expectations are so strong that it overrides the actual image. It's bending reality real time right now. Now, here's the twist. Right now, you have two levels of awareness. On one level, you're aware that's an illusion. But even with that awareness, your brain won't let you change how you perceive it. It insists on its interpretation, no matter what you know. This simple trick shows us how powerful a brain's expectations can be. It makes you wonder if your brain can override your perception in such a simple and powerful manner, what else in your reality is being altered without you realizing? Now, let's go a bit deeper and talk about you. The you inside your head that's listening to me right now. Now, what if I told you that this feeling of being a distinct person, a unique self, might actually also be an illusion? Think about it. Neuroscientist Sam Harris and philosophers David Hume suggest that this idea of self may not be as real as we might believe. You know, it's not located in, say, a single spot in the brain. Instead, it's really like a story. It's like a mental construct, which is created by countless neurons working together in tandem to give you a feeling of a single, continuous person. Now, what do we do with this information? Most of us go through our lives without ever stopping to question the nature of our reality. We assume that what we see, what we hear, what we feel is the full story. But what if it's not? Today I invite you, each of you, to take a few minutes and reflect on this question. What is reality really? 
I encourage you to start your own exploration. Begin questioning what you may have always taken for granted. Now, if you take this journey and you dare to dig deeper, how might that change the way you live, see and experience the world around you? Thank you.